I'm delighted to welcome today Marie Cherritt, who is a specialist in women's hormonal function. So welcome, Marie. Hello, Elaine. Thank you for inviting me. So women's hormones is a big, big thing these days. I never knew anything about hormones until a few years ago. And now suddenly they were on every street corner, everybody's lips. Yes, absolutely. Because I think, you know, hormonal imbalances are really quite common in today's society with today's lifestyle and everything impacting our hormones in a big way. So how did you get involved with hormones? What was it? What was the driver for you to, to take such an interest? Right. OK, well, I became a nutritionist um, about 15 years ago. Um, it was it was driven by my own health problems, actually, um, you know, my health problems started in late teens. Um, I basically had, um, uh, I had food addictions and I also had um, an eating disorder called bulimia. And uh, that started in my late teens and I was very, very unhealthy because I was addicted to, I was addicted to junk food. I was addicted to everything that I shouldn't be eating. And uh, I was unfortunately one of those people, one of those secret eaters as well. You know, I used to binge and um, I used to purge. So that, that wasn't very nice. And, and because of that, you know, I was like that for 20 odd years and I became really quite, quite unhealthy because of that. Um, and I had all sorts of symptoms, you know, with my own health, you know, I had chronic fatigue. Um, I had, I had um, skin disorders. I had um, my immune system just didn't work properly um, and things like that. And one of the things that I, really did suffer from badly with sinus issues so um i went to the doctor and got this um, um corticosteroid um spray which worked really well but unfortunately i was over medicated for for many many um actually for many months i should have only been on it for a month but he kept me on it for a year and a half so consequently my immune system crashed and I ended up being becoming very poorly indeed. Um, I had regular UTIs. Um, I had um, um, thrush and things like that, you know, um, genital urinary um, complications, um, skin disorders. My, my whole body um, came up in a sort of like a, a, a rash that just wouldn't go. And, you know, every trip to the doctor meant more medication, which was actually making, you know, I know now making my underlying um, condition worse. So, you know, I was in this sort of perpetual cycle of, of, of um, sort of binge eating, being on medication, feeling worse for about 10 or 15 years before, oh, wow. before the penny dropped. And I thought, well, I've got to do something about this because I was getting worse and worse. You know, I had no energy at all. Um, and so I visited a um, local nutritionist and uh, she put me on this wonderful diet and um, I was amazed actually, um, genuinely amazed um, how eating the right diet and uh, you know having the right food could actually do for my health. So that obviously spurred me on to, to study myself um, nutritional medicine at the University of West London. Um, and since then, I haven't looked back. So I've been this health freak since. <laughs> how, how long is that, Mary? Um, it's been, well, I, I qualified in 2009, um, um, but I had, a, I had to bring up my son. He has special needs. So I had to put my career on to hold. So that was quite a long time ago. But, you know, you know, in the interim, I obviously, you know, practiced this philosophy and um, yeah, and I've never looked back. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start eating junk food again, certainly not on a regular basis. Although, you know, the temptation is always there. I don't think you ever quite cure yourself of, um, of the eating disorder. I think it's always there in the back of your mind. You know, the temptation is always there. But knowing now what I know, you know, I try and keep myself on a straight and narrow. So yeah absolutely absolutely it's about balance isn't it at the end of the day we can't all be saints and I, my, my my take on it is if 80 percent of the time we're we're good and the other 20 percent we're not so good as long as it's no no more than 20 percent and even then I'm, I'm probably more 90 10 in my own life um, yes but uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely. quite too too brutal for some people uh, the over medication is interesting I get this all the time 
clients come to see me normally where they've been to the doctors, they feel mm. dreadful. The doctor's done loads of tests, says there's nothing wrong with you, but here, try these pills, see if this works, see if that's worked. And they end up with four, five, six, eight types of medication. Yeah. And you said all of them are causing side effects and you have a medication for the next one. And so it goes on. It's a toxic soup. It is a toxic soup, yeah, and in it's it's such a danger. But it's it's the thing is, people are after quick fixes. Yes, yeah. you know, in our society, which which is a shame because we really need to address the underlying cause yeah. rather than just put a a quick fix on things. Yeah, absolutely. I think they always fix. Actually, they they do actually make um, conditions worse. You know, we rarely recover from from these things. Yeah, as I, I was know, well. I was over medicated as well. I was uh, yeah. born with a kidney disease. It didn't get picked up until I was about 22. Oh, and wow. um, I was a competitive swimmer for most of my life, uh, most of my life, most of my teens. And wow. um, I was uh, at, at national level. So I was training quite often twice a day in a chlorinated pool. And I used to get regular UTIs and uh, projectile vomiting would just crop up from time to time. And it was because my kidneys were getting. I, I learned that subsequently my mm -hmm. kidneys were getting blocked at the bottom tubes and nothing was being released so it would either come up with the, the purging or, or the um the utis and yeah. um the uh the treatment well i was told it was incurable um so this rare disease which is still rare today it's incurable yeah. i'd be on medication for life and i was under highly street doctors um mm -hmm. i would get checked every six months yes carry on taking the tablets and i was on a three-week rotating cycle of antibiotics for 23 oh. years oh my goodness and yes. that in itself wouldn't be good for your kidneys no. at all would it no. no oh that's horrific so in my 40s i woke up to natural health and well-being through a chiropractor and a nutritionist and i've never looked back since i'm in my mid-60s now so um and i and i um I, i'm so um i'm so grateful that i learned all about this stuff you know 20 odd years oh, ago but it yeah. still wasn't enough to stop me getting cancer various different cancers that i've had so oh. um but i've learned so much along the way and all of these things are gifts they're wake-up calls to us people think oh poor you this and that no no thank you for bringing me the 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 nudge you know to look at my life and look at my diet you've, you've created a, a recipe book uh, marie tell us about that yes um i've, I've put together a um an 80 page all color recipe book called um, your health called heavenly hormones the heavenly heavenly hormones recipe book sorry I couldn't get that out um, and uh, yes that's available for people to download if they wish so those recipes are basically anti-inflammatory so you know whether you have hormonal imbalances or whether you have other problems these recipes will definitely help um, keep you healthy brilliant are these recipes of foods that you've cooked yourself is this how you eat um, this is basically how I eat. Yes, I haven't tried all the recipes out myself, but they're similar to the sort of recipes I have every day. So it, it's basically, you know, re eating real food rather than processed food. Mm -hmm. And uh, this often requires people to cook, which is mm -hmm. a challenge for some people. But these recipes are quite easy to follow. So, yeah. Brilliant. I, I tend to to um, not to follow recipes. I'll, I'll, I'll follow the general gist, but I don't weigh anything. I don't measure anything usually. And I'll just go by intuition and things normally work out okay, but there's yeah. ways to recover if things aren't, aren't um, yeah, quite like right. Yeah, sounds like me. <laughs> it's lovely experimenting. I really, I really enjoy it. And it's, it's cathartic. It's a, a form of meditation, isn't it? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would, I just could never, ever bring myself uh, famous last words. I'd have to be really desperate if I had anything that was processed these days. I just... You know, the thought of having anything out of a package just fills me with horror. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, they unfortunately taste too salty and too sweet for me now if I have anything like that. So. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, so what kind of training did you do, Marie? Okay, well, I um, attended the University of West London, which was at that time called um, the Thames Valley University. And I studied um, nutritional medicine, which is basically um, coming from a very naturopathic um, um, outlook, you know, treating the underlying cause of disease first and using sort of detoxification protocols, albeit gentle, just to shift the body from a sort of inflammatory state to, a, to an anti-inflammatory state which is where we begin to heal 
because the body can't heal um, when it's chronically inflamed. Um, and uh, we, we need to shift that balance over to, over to a more anti-inflammatory state, which is our natural state. And then if we provide our body with the tools to heal, then the body generally um, begins to heal itself. And the tools that I provide are obviously, um, you know, nutritional um, recommendations and lifestyle recommendations. Mm, absolutely. It's not rocket science, but so many people are unaware of actually of how simple it is. But you need to be dedicated, don't you? You can't just suddenly change overnight for you know the way you've been living for 30 40 50 years um, it does take no. a transition yeah it's quite difficult and I think people really need to have a, a big goal you know to, to give them that incentive to change because obviously you know food is addictive and we do have this relationship with food that starts in our childhood you know food is comforting and you know when you take away people's comforts you know it, it's, it's it's difficult it's difficult for them to get well. So how I do it is it's a very gradual process. Um, so the client really, um, in, in a way, she dictates what, you know, how far she wants to go and how how quickly or how slowly she'd like she'd like to do it. But providing she has her goals in, in mind, you know, these, these are all very achievable within 90 days. Um, you know, not necessarily full reversal, but certainly, um, Get, getting her to the point of feeling a lot better and looking a lot better and that then that gives them the incentive to carry on and uh, research themselves and just to, you know get themselves back onto the um the healthy path as it were you're saying she and her so yeah. you, you presumably this is just for women do you work with um, men at all um, i have worked with men in the past yes but um at the moment, I, I just work with women because um, I, I help them navigate the hormonal changes that come with midlife, like with perimenopause and menopause. Um, and I help them understand that, you know, even though their symptoms are quite common, you know, we, you know, many women actually go through uh, midlife with so many symptoms. But, um, you know, I want to impart the message that this isn't necessarily um either normal or inevitable um, and we, we can certainly help um, mitigate the um, the horrible symptoms that they might otherwise have to endure which and I know they're not very nice yeah. although I didn't have any myself and I think I think the only symptom I had when I went through my own menopause was um, the uh, a little bit of brain fog and the word finding issues so you know I'm thinking hey, what's that word what's that word mm. and so <laughs> If you see me sort of thinking, oh, you know, something on the tip of my tongue, it's that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was very fortunate. Um, I didn't have any problems. My mum didn't have any problems um, that I'm aware of. And um, I've interviewed quite a lot of people who help with the many merry merry pools. I'm <laughs> oh, there, there you go. There's a slip up. It should be merry pools, not menopause. Um, yeah, so, merry pools sounds good. Yeah, that's just having a happy like menopause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mary Pauls. Um, I'm going to write that down actually because I might quote yeah, myself again. Mary Pauls. <laughs> um, so yeah, lots of people that I've interviewed who who help specifically with the menopause. Um, we we all agree on on the fact that if you when you're going into the menopausal period, so mm -hmm. sort of midlife, which can for some people can be as early as late twenties, um, but typically I think it's forties, isn't it, that people would tend to be going towards this. Um, period yes yes although the hormonal changes tend to start around age 35 um you know with the slow decline in estrogen and the, the more rapid decline in in progesterone and so it's the imbalance of these hormones and and many women as they head into perimenopause are actually estrogen dominant um and and what that what that basically means is their estrogen can either be um you know of a normal level or even low but but you know it, in comparison to progesterone and in a balance to progesterone it's quite high and so they are estrogen dominant and this can actually bring with it its own symptoms of you know hormonal imbalance which look quite uncomfortable and uh, not many women realize that um you know this this term estrogen dominance which i think is fueled by our lifestyle our diet and the um, environmental toxins that we have to deal with on a, on a daily basis as well. 
Mm, absolutely. I remember reading a book some years ago uh, written by Chris Woolens. Um, he runs Cancer Active, or he did. He, he, he founded canceractive.com, so specific, okay. specifically for people with cancer uh, support. But there's a book, I can't remember the 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 word but uh, um, the the the, ti- the official title but it's all about estrogen and how there's so much estrogen hidden in our food um, and when we're having the fast foods the processed foods and so on we're just you know necking it down the whole time and we're getting ourselves out of balance even more aren't we um, yes we are yeah absolutely and um you know i think you know that's why why i also recommend an organic um, diet where possible I, I know it's not always possible but so many of the, our vegetables and fruits nowadays are sprayed with um, um, insecticides and pesticides and what have you and they're in in themselves are, are estrogenic um, and, and basically what that means is they interfere with the body's own estrogen so they go and um, um, park up as it as I say in the receptor sites for our own estrogen so blocking um, our own estrogen being to be able to work properly and so you know this can really cause real significant problems for women and um, that's why I advise my clients you know um, to to go for organic vegetables where possible and to eat clean meat if they are in meat eaters um, not to go for the meat that has hormones and antibiotic um, injected into them because again these are hormone disruptors in the environment which will really significantly affect their symptoms make their symptoms worse and perhaps even contribute to chronic disease down the line absolutely how how do for the benefit of the listeners how do they know if the stuff's been injected or not in, um, and, and what well, sort of meats are you talking about yeah okay well you know um beef for instance you know it's um it's, it's something that's quite often you know when when someone's a meat eater beef and pork are quite often injected and uh sometimes um it's best to to go to a butcher's to go to the local butchers and ask questions as i do at, at my local butchers i always ask is this meat clean is this routinely injected with antibiotics and growth hormones and what have you and they reply no um so i have to take them on trust there but certainly organic meat um isn't so you know this mass-produced meat that we get um you know mass-produced um mass farmed meat is really not very healthy at all and for that reason for many other reasons as well you know we should only be eating if we are eating animals at all eating healthy animals that have led um, a healthy life and have been on a diet try and find one yeah healthy humans healthy animals there we're a drying breed aren't we yes absolutely so um, I, I, I guide my clients not to have um, red meat, um, particularly if they've got cancer or you know, in recovery from cancer, um, yes. and definitely not pork because of all the nasty uh, mm. parasites and things that remain in pork, um, which I believe is why Jewish people don't have pork, because it's dirty. Yes, yeah. I mean, pork is really, you know, it's a very inflammatory meat. Um, I do advise my clients to stay off pork, certainly for the first three months. Um, you know, I still eat pork myself. I, I do. I do quite like pork, but I've, I'm very careful with where I source it from. But even after eating it, I do actually find that the few days afterwards, I'm more inflamed. You know, my muscles ache more and my, really? my joints ache more. Yeah, I really do feel it. So, yeah, it, 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 uh, as you say, not a very healthy meat at all. Um, grass fed beef, I, I'm, I'm OK with um, and I'm OK with recommending that to clients if they are a meat eater. You know, but I certainly wouldn't have the grain fed, wouldn't want to have the grain fed variety that's, you know, being produced nowadays because that is very inflammatory. So the, you know, the goal is to try and get the the client from an inflammatory, chronically inflamed state into a more anti-inflammatory picture. So. Super. And I'm I'm quite comfortable with game. So because it's wild, it's roaming free, etc. And assuming that, you know, where it's where it's roaming is is okay not yes, you know, yes. covered in um because sp- even, even an organic field can get sprayed on from the um you know lo- local neighboring farms can't it so i've got myself a um oxygen generator is it what's okay. it called just look at the back here Ox- ozone generator so oh, right. the okay. ozone generator so i i wash all of my vegetables in the water so i put this it's it's for the benefit of the listeners it's something like you'd have in a fish tank to oxygenate the water to create the bubbles 
and you have okay. a lovely smell afterwards as well because you've got this lovely fresh air a bit like after a rainstorm and you have all oh, the, yes. that lovely smell the ozone yes so i wash oh, all of my stuff in a bowl in in the sink with um with the ozone generator going and whether i've got organic or not it's not very often i don't get organic but if if i can't get organic um yeah. you know I, I might wash it through twice you know and to make sure that i've done the best i can but at the end of the day we live in the world <clears throat> excuse me we live in a world that's full of toxicity all around us and we just need to be careful don't we yeah, absolutely. We can only do what we can. And I think, you know, by keeping keeping our own bodies healthy and keeping our liver healthy, because obviously that's the organ that, you know, has to detoxify everything. And uh, as well as being the organ that um, helps um, regulate hormones and um, balance hormones as well, you know, we really need to be keeping keeping our liver healthy and obviously organic food, organic vegetables that will help to do that. And that idea of yours of the ozone um, generator, that sounds like a fabulous idea, Elaine. I'll, I'll, I'm going to research that and look into that. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't expensive. Um, they're anywhere between 30 and 130 on Amazon. Um, no, I don't okay. like shopping on Amazon, but I don't know where else you can get these things from. I got mine, um, I'm in the Algarve in Portugal and I paid 35 euros. I was very happy. And it's, oh, wow. a, it's exactly the same one as I, I researched last year, but I didn't I wasn't I was um I was moving around last year so I thought well when I'm settled I'll get one and when I researched it, it was 95 euros it's now 35 so um, oh, okay. one of the rare things that's actually gone down in in, in life y yes <laughs> so um you mentioned detox um so we know that eating cleanly helps to detox and reduce inflammation oh. and so on what are the other ways that people can detox Okay, well, I, I studied functional medicine as well, and functional medicine really sort of dives into dives down to the the root cause of illness. So, so keeping gut health, um, keeping the gut healthy is is a primary thing for for me and my clients. So, you know, by by taking out the inflammatory food and replacing it with the anti-inflammatory food, eventually, you know, over time, you can get your gut healthy and um, that will help to detox. And it's, it's amazing how the gut flora themselves can actually help in the detoxification process, um, which, which is amazing that they can actually detox, you know, chemicals from the environment. So they're, they're very, very clever indeed. But um, in, in general, I mean, other things, you know, not necessarily diet and um, and, and what you eat but things like stress reduction can be a great mm -hmm. detox because that can bring the um the nervous system back into rest and digest and from fight flight which is obviously you know not a good place to be in all of the time um as we are in in today's um society you know most of us are really stressed all the time pulling our hair out the stress is coming in from all sorts of directions and i think if people can give themselves time you know find time to um to basically help themselves and to look after themselves and perhaps have a, have a little bit of rest and relaxation that in itself is a great detox because that again brings the body back into an anti-inflammatory state where um where the cells can then begin to act normally and uh you know repair mechanisms and detoxification mechanisms can um be up there at their working at their best do you recommend any supplements um, yeah, well, I don't tend to um, go too wild on the supplements to begin with. Um, generally, for, for my clients who come to see me initially, I will also I will always recommend a good multi vitamin and mineral. Um, I have my own suppliers um, who are, you know, the supplements are, are very high quality um, and also a good probiotic um, and something like a good quality fish oil for their anti-inflammatory properties and vitamin D3. They're the, th they're the four that I tend to recommend to begin with. Anyway, I myself take a lot more. I take various things like milk thistle and things like that to help, you know, keep my liver healthy and things like that. But uh, I think many people are sort of reluctant at first, maybe to take supplements, you know, they don't really understand them, um, but I do encourage, they certainly do help the healing process if taken properly for sure but there's they're not a replacement for a good diet no absolutely um i, I don't recommend supplements apart from a multivit um mm. 
until I've done testing. So I do various different tests with the clients. And when we see what the body needs, that's when I recommend. And even then only short term, I don't recommend long term supplements. Um, yeah. I don't take any specific supplement. I just think looking at my cupboard over there, you know, everything that in my cupboard, it's all weird and wonderful, but it's all food based, plant based. So uh, yeah. I, I mix up a whole variety of things. I have live organic wheatgrass every day. And um, okay. I, I, I put lots of different things, reishi mushroom and acai berry and all kinds of yummy things in there. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yes, yes, jolly nice. Oh, there's a fly. A fly keeps on, it's been buzzing around me the whole time we've been talking and oh. every now and then it lands on the on the camera. So uh, every now and then that's why it's gone. And it's looking right in the camera. It's shush him off. There we go. Oh, um, really? <laughs> so um, you mentioned 90 days. So do you actually have a programme that's a 90 day programme, Marie? Yes, I'm beta testing a program at the moment. Um, so the reason I'm beta testing it is I'm not very used to tech. Um, I haven't got anything set up, you know, with regard to anyone following a program. Like I don't have social media. Um, I don't have any groups that my clients can join. I, I don't have a Facebook um, page created yet, although my lovely VA is, is on to that task as we speak um, and so yeah I'm beta testing my 90 day program and I find that in 90 days you know we can make some significant shifts and that that encourage women to then carry on the process for well hopefully the rest of their lives mm -hmm. you know once they bought into the fact that food can be medicine yeah absolutely I introduced my fridge as my medicine cupboard because it's yeah. you know and that, that's how I see it. everything single thing in there is will, will do me good even the 95 percent dark very dark chocolate um in moderation <laughs> is good um, yes absolutely full of yeah. antioxidants yeah fantastic that's, yeah indeed so um it's been lovely speaking with you uh, Marie how can people get hold of you Okay, um, at the moment, I don't have a website. Again, that's a work in progress. But my email is marie at yourhealthyhormones.com. So if anyone wants to get in touch with me, um, then that is my email address. And also I have, I think you're going to put a link to my recipe ebook yes. down below the video. And um, if anyone wants to download that for free, they're more than welcome. And that can be obtained by emailing you as well, presumably. Yes, they can, can be. Yes, they can email me for that as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so it's marie at yourhealthyhormones.com. Yes. Yeah. Marvellous. Fantastic. Well, it's been lovely speaking with you, Marie Cherrett. And um, I look forward to uh, linking with you when you get yourself on social media. I can't believe you know, on social, I don't know how anybody exists without social media, but I guess you have referrals, do you? Client referrals? Um, yes, at the moment. And um, well, it's a work in progress. I intend to be on social media. I realise how important it is. You know, I don't particularly like social media, but I know it's important. So I will be there. Yes, very soon. So watch this space. Okay. But anyone that signs up for the ebook, um, I will be. I will have a newsletter um, going out to people. Um, you know, if, if they want it, of course, and um, I'll notify anyone of my upcoming um, social media presence, you know, when it happens. Okay, so, so it's been lovely talking to you as well, Elaine. Thank you for having marvelous, me. Marvellous, marvellous, marvellous. Marie at yourhealthyhormones.com. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine.